Yo, what's going on guys? Mush back at it with another video. Got a couple of things to go over in this video. A big stealth release on Steam. I don't think releasing games during the Steam Summer Sale is the best idea, but it happens anyway. And there was a big game that was just released that a lot of you guys might have missed out on. So I want to bring attention to that. At a business conference, Valve said a lot of interesting stuff. So I want to go over that. And I also want to take a look at the biggest news in gaming right now. And that is the fact that Fallout 76 is having its crossplay blocked by Sony, or at least that's what's going around. Todd Howard said something to that effect. Essentially, Sony wasn't being as helpful as they possibly could. So I'll be giving you guys my input at the end of this video. First, let's talk about the stealth release on Steam. Crash Bandicoot, the insane trilogy. Yes, Crash Bandicoot has been released on PC. One of the most iconic video game characters of all time has made its way over to PC, and it happened during the summer sale, and hardly anyone is talking about it. Personally, I haven't given this game a shot yet on PC. I did play it on the PlayStation 4 and I had a great time with it, but it is receiving overwhelmingly positive feedback on Steam right now, so looks like the port's good. At the end of the day, this is Crash Bandicoot remade. It's not like it's a juggernaut of a game to run, but good to see that it is running well enough on PC. I know a lot of you guys are gonna like this. I know we could play Crash Bandicoot with emulators and things like that, but with the Insane Trilogy, this is a full-on remake. This does not look anywhere near the PlayStation 1 games. It looks a lot better. So if you're a fan of Crash Bandicoot, this is definitely going to be something to check out. I'm personally disappointed that we're not getting the Spyro Reignited trilogy right away at launch. That is releasing in September, and it's coming to Xbox One and PlayStation 4, but a PC version is probably going to come sometime down the line. I liked Crash Bandicoot back in the day, but the series I'm super nostalgic with is Spyro the Dragon. That was like my first video game franchise ever that I got super into. And yeah, I'm bummed out that I won't be able to check it out on PC, but that is shaping up really well. For those of you where Crash Bandicoot was that franchise, for you back in the day. Well, this insane trilogy is probably going to be a love letter to you. By the way, there are two brand new levels, the Storm Ascent level, as well as the Future Tense level. The Future Tense level just got released. So yeah, check those out. $39.99 to a lot of you guys might be a little bit steep of a price point. At this point, I'm pretty sure you can get this game rather discounted on PlayStation 4. So I would rather pay like $19.99 for it. But hey, if you're super nostalgic with Crash Bandicoot, the price point really doesn't matter to you. As far as system requirements go, to go over that real quick. Minimum CPU requirement is an Intel Core i5-750 AMD Phenom 2 X4 965, so very old CPUs there. They're touting 8GB of RAM minimum, so that is relatively high on basis with the higher end games these days. As far as the GPU goes, minimum GPU requirement is a GTX 660 2GB or an AMD Radeon HD 7852 2GB. They are saying you need 30GB of hard drive space available as well, so that's quite a lot. But yeah, Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy, it is out. Overwhelmingly positive feedback on Steam based on 640 48 user reviews, so check that out if you are interested. Moving on from that, at the Business Conference for Games Industry event in Russia, Valve had a lot to say, and they let out some pretty interesting nuggets of information. One piece of information that really interested me was the fact that they had 13 and a half million new first-time purchasers between January and May, so those are people that may have been on Steam in the past but have never bought anything ever, and they had 13 and a half million people dropping money in some Steam-related content between January and in May. This is really interesting to me because I thought there would have been a direct correlation based on GPU prices being really high and people not buying anything on Steam, at least when it came to new first-time purchasers, but 13.5 million is still a significant number of people. That 13.5 million people are those that are just being brought into the PC gaming world because, again, this is the first time they are buying anything, and chances are if you had a gaming PC prior to January and May, probably would have bought something on Steam as well. I guess it could also be things like like free-to-play microtransactions and whatnot, but you would have imagined that 13.5 million number to at least take in a little bit of a hit, but no, not at all. They've also got a lot of other interesting information, including language use of Steam players. The majority of Steam users' language is English, but another majority, I can't even tell which is bigger, is simplified Chinese. Everything really pales in comparison to those two, so all that China stuff I think is pretty accurate in terms of a lot of people over at China or whatever's going on in China with games like PUBG, that graph definitely leads credence to that. There's a lot of other pieces of information, and they actually had one slide that said, quote, Steam is a different kind of opportunity. We don't sell ad space or pick winners and losers. We are not the taste police, so that is very relevant to what just happened recently where Steam was about to remove a bunch of games off Steam. Great games find their audience, huge variety of business models, huge variety in scope, style, and mechanics. I'll leave a link to the PC Gamer article where you can have a look at that in full. It's pretty interesting, so have a look for yourself. 
And finally, I do want to talk a little bit about Fallout 76 having its crossplay reportedly banned by Sony. Now, Todd Howard did an interview with a German site, and that site asked if Fallout 76 would have crossplay between PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. And Todd Howard specifically stated that Bethesda would love to do it. However, Sony is not as helpful as everyone would like. That is a direct quote. I really like Todd Howard's use of that quote because while he didn't directly bury Sony himself, everybody can put the pieces together and see that, that Sony probably had something to do with the kibosh being put on Fallout 76 having crossplay. And I just don't know where these people are coming from. Do two wrongs make a right? Just because Microsoft screwed over consumers in the past makes it any okay for Sony to screw over consumers now? That is so crazy to me that people are going to the lengths of defending Sony screwing over the consumers because Microsoft screwed over the consumers in the past. Think about how stupid that sounds. But yes, that is the current world we live in. Microsoft screwed over consumers in the past. They aren't screwing over consumers now. Sony right now is screwing over consumers consumers and you should complain about it if you are the consumer. Now I understand why Sony not being helpful is stopping crossplay with PlayStation 4, but why can't we still have crossplay between Xbox and PC? Maybe that's something on the table right now. Maybe they're working on it. Just I'm curious because I don't think Sony saying no would put a stop to crossplay on every platform. I think Microsoft would be completely on board because Microsoft has to be consumer friendly right now. And they've gotten an incredible amount of positive PR based on the Switch and Xbox One stuff. So why not continue to reap in that positive? positive feedback, but as far as Sony goes, they're being super anti-consumer, and if you can't see that, you're pretty blind. That is gonna conclude this video, guys. Like I said, check out Crash Bandicoot The Insane Trilogy on PC. This is a pretty big game release that no one is talking about. It released right in the midst of the Steam Summer Sale, and I think that is such a horrible idea. Usually, we don't even see any big game releases during the summer, so we typically don't have this issue. I think this is the first time I can remember where a major title has been released during the Summer Sale, and I'm telling you guys, that is definitely negatively impacted the sales of this game, but I'm sure if you're really interested in Crash Bandicoot, once you find this game, you will definitely be checking it out. Steam has had 13 and a half million new first-time purchases between January and May, so that is pretty significant. Along with that, a lot of other nuggets of information. I'll leave the full PC Gamer article in the description box down below where you guys can check that out. And let me know your thoughts on Fallout 76 and crossplay being blocked by Sony. I think this is a big topic in the gaming world and something everybody should be talking about. If you guys have a request for a future video, you can leave that in the comment section below, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.